Uh, also, we have a huge case uh, happening in Michigan, a big hearing on this one. You may have heard of this one. Beverly McCallum back in court today for a motions hearing. So this lady was accused in the 2002 murder of her husband, arrested nearly 20 years after her husband, Roberto Caraballo, died. Police say she pushed him down their basement stairs and then beat him with a hammer. Then her daughter and friend allegedly helped to dispose of his body. Now her daughter is already serving a life sentence after being convicted in connection with her stepfather's death. The friend is also in jail. And then after pleading guilty to second degree murder, uh, that was the friend's uh, charge, I believe. Uh, now it is McCallum's turn to face the music. Let's go into court uh, this morning. Most sides are uh, making some arguments in front of the judge, apparently has to do with the amending of the complaint against the defendant. Take a look. The Honorable Janice K. Cunningham presiding. Good morning. Please be seated. Okay. All right. We are on the record in the people of the state of Michigan. Where is she? Okay. We'll just take a second and wait for her to come in. On the record in the people of the state of Michigan versus Beverly and McCollum, McCallum, excuse me, file 22244FC. Prosecutor Lloyd is here on behalf of the people. Mr. Havis is here with his client. Raise your right hand. Ma'am, would you raise your right hand, please? Yes. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God under penalty of perjury? Yes? The record should reflect that the defendant has said yes. I would like to start with uh, uh, two preliminary matters before we move forward. The defendant had brought a motion asking the court to dismiss count one of the amended information, alleging that it violated the terms and conditions for which the defendant was extradited from Italy. I had read the motion. Uh, read the corresponding law and had drafted an opinion in that regard. I then received the response from the prosecutor's office um, on, I think it was late Thursday, of which the prosecutor uh, has altered its position and was saying that um, they would amend the information to add second degree if the jury was instructed, not, and they, if the court allowed first degree murder to remain on the jury form and that the jury would then be instructed not to return a verdict on first degree. And if a special jury instruction was given regarding extradition and the effect it had on the case. That was something brand new. So my first question is, would the defense like an adjournment to be able to submit a reply brief and any corresponding law that you think would impact that? We would, Your Honor. Thank you for asking us that. We did receive the, uh, the responsive brief from the prosecution Thursday. Obviously, we didn't think it was a time response of the year. There were some arguments that were raised in that. Obviously, with the arguments towards the, um, the jury instructions that I think needs to be fully vetted out by the defense, I would like some additional time. The other issue that I need to bring to everyone's attention is when I arrived at work this morning, I received a letter from the United States Department of State. The United States Department of State has stated in this letter 
that prosecuting the defendant for first degree murder would be a violation of the diplomatic assurances to the United States and the promises made by the prosecutor. Their position is compliance with U.S. obligations and extradition treaties and related assurances provided as a condition of extradition is critical to our ability both to secure future extraditions um, and reciprocally to ensure other nations act consistent with their own obligations. Um, Ms. Cook forwarded that by email to both of your offices. Did you receive that letter? Mr. Lloyd, did you receive that letter? <clears throat> your Honor, good morning. Good morning. I am well aware of the letter I've had the well, I would love to say it's a pleasure, but it hasn't been to have the U.S. Attorney and the Department of Justice and whatever other federal government agencies deciding to contact Eaton County, oh. which is a rarity, okay. which has also caused Mr. Candela, who, if and when we get to the point of arguing this motion, will be the one arguing it to actually become an expert in treaties and agreements. And there's been several discussions in the regards that uh, the U.S. and Italy actually violated our own treaties when they amended the uh, charges through the humanitarian commissions. Be that as it may, if you missed uh, reading the first paragraph, which is the only paragraph I actually agree with in the letter that they sent, which is that they would recommend the, the murder two aspect. They, they didn't really argue with me that Therian would be correct under federal law, which would allow us to proceed under what we're requesting in our motion. Second, Your Honor, I believe that we actually filed a motion on Wednesday uh, with the court, which would fall under the, the requirements as far as filing answering motions before the hearing itself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, uh, I'm finding it odd that we're asking the defense for extra time when my office gets hit on a regular basis with motions or answers being filed at the last possible minute. So, but if that's what's required, we'll do that. But yes, I, I am aware of the letter. I don't agree with the letter. I've advised them of that. I agree, I agree with the first paragraph. But, you know, I, we have come up with a resolution in this matter. And well, it's wait, not don't a say surprise. That. It's not a surprise. You have to come up with a resolution requires both parties. You have made another offer as to what you would do to comply with your promise to charge her only with second degree murder. Well, Your Honor, just so we're clear, those two weeks that I asked for that bring uh -huh. us to here today, I had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Hayes. This is not a surprise because I presented a form, if not that jury instruction itself, as well as what our desires were to do during that two week period. So this is not a surprise thing that I all of a sudden just show up on Wednesday with an answer. I answered it because I was told at that point that he would not agree to it. Okay. So at that point, we had to answer the, uh, the uh, motion itself and present to the court the sure. resolution. But this is not a surprise to the defense as to what we were suggesting to do here. Well, it is a different uh, position than what the court was aware of. I wasn't privy to your two weeks of good faith negotiation. I was not aware that you had had any contact with the United States Department of State. Literally, when I arrived at 8 o'clock this morning, Ms. Cook said, yeah, there's a letter on your desk. So that, I've only read it twice. All right, so I haven't digested it with all the particulars. I read it and went, okay, I want to make sure that both of you, both sides had it. And she assured me that she had emailed it. Um, this case, what has happened in this case in the court's opinion, is a case of first impression in the state of Michigan. I think that's obvious by the fact that in support of the arguments made on your behalf, the case that is cited um, is a case that goes back to, well, Pinkerton's 1945, and Theron is not that much newer. Um, and in doing, uh, preliminary research on Friday, um, at least we were not able to find more updated rulings. And of course, this court's not bound by the uh, Therian case. But 
I, under, I, re, I read it several times, and I think I understand it. I'm not so sure I agree with your interpretation of it. However, when you're dealing with a case of first impression, and you're dealing with issues about whether someone has or has not uh, followed the agreement made on behalf of the United States with the country of Italy, I need to be as well informed as I can. And whether or not you did file timely, which I do believe you did, um, the court always has the ability and should request a reply to something new that was raised. What you raised in your response is the very first time I had heard that argument, and I want to be well informed, which means the defense should have an opportunity to respond to it before I make a decision. I also think, from what I've read in your response, that you're conflating two issues. The first issue that I was prepared to rule on, the first issue is what can the defendant be charged with and tried here in Eaton County? I don't think anyone can argue that the agreement was made that the prosecutor of Eaton County would only try her on second degree murder and would also not try right, the judge trying to get to the bottom of this so when she's extradited she thinks it's second degree the state amends it's first degree they want to pursue first degree defense counsel say no drop it down to second degree the judge weighing what she should do we're going to hit a break we'll go back to court in michigan after this there's a tragic outcome in this case. Civil trial that is the focus of the Netflix documentary, Take Care of Maya. How a misdiagnosis tore their family apart. They continue to accuse Jack and Beata of being child abusers. Jack called me and said Beata just hung herself. Is the hospital they're suing responsible for what happened? The Take Care of Maya trial. Trial coverage today on Court TV. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. Let's go back to Michigan now. Uh, we're watching the hearing involving defendant Beverly McCallum. Uh, this is a motions hearing. So she's been accused of murdering her husband back in 2002. Uh, arrested nearly 20 years after police say the crime was committed. Arrested in Rome, Italy. And so what's at issue is what she's going to be charged with ultimately when this case proceeds to trial. Will it be first degree murder or second degree murder? That's what it was when she uh, waived extradition to come back here. Uh, so the judge is weighing uh, the law, the arguments from both attorneys. Let's go back in together now. It's in your own words. Now, having said that, to me, the second question is if you amended the information back to second degree, which is what you did to get her over here. Now we have a trial on second degree murder and uh, intentional dismemberment, mutilation of a body. Now we get down to a trial procedure. That to me would be a separate motion where you would come to the court and say, I think I have the right to introduce evidence and to talk about the extradition process and how we got to where we are. That's a whole different issue um, than does the information have to read second degree murder because of the agreement made with Italy. And that's what the court rule says, that 6.112 6 talks about what has to be in the information. And 6.112 says a prosecution must be based on the information or indictment. That's what has to be in there. The information must set forth the substance of the accusation against the defendant in the name of the statutory citation penalty of the, and the penalty of the offense committed. So the defendant's motion was saying Currently, the defendant is charged with first degree murder. That violates the agreement, and that should be dismissed for that reason, with the logical conclusion being that you would amend the information to charge her with second degree murder. That's the first question. 
That's not contingent on any pretrial rulings of what is relevant evidence, what can be let in, what is more prejudicial than probative. Those are pretrial matters. This is about the information. And that is how I was approaching their um, motion and the record should reflect we did have one in chamber pre-motion uh, uh, pre where we talked about this. So to me, that's the first question. And it's not to be joined with or conflated with what will or will not be allowed at the time of trial. Does that make sense? It does, Your Honor, except for us understand the conflating about who should be allowed to speak as far as witnesses but we do have the first issue where we say that the first degree should remain and not be right yeah, and the jury instructions should not be read they, the jury should actually be told that they will not be making a decision on that and so i understand where you say that we're conflicting the two in the people's opinion the two went hand in hand because if you were allowed for us to be able to explain to you why the first degree needed to stay there, that would be that, well, it needs to stay there because we need to bring a Department of Justice witness in to actually explain extradition. So I understand where you can say, I'm not going to rule on this now, you can file a further motion. But in the people's respect, without us being able to explain exactly why we were requesting the murder one stay and the murder two be added, we couldn't do that without explaining why we would need that to be done. But uh, what I don't, the, my confusion then lies with, and I had it on a little piece of paper, but I don't have it now. Uh, I believe that the uh, witness that turned, if you will, or admitted, McMillan? Yes. I believe, as I recall, that was in 2020. Does that sound right? Or 21? That he actually pled guilty in the yes. courtroom? Yes. Yeah. I believe it was 2019. Yeah. 2019, okay. So at that point, and of course I took the plea. Yes. And I heard all the facts as he stated them to be, which is what laid out the issue of first degree murder, the conspiracy, etc. So that was in 2019. Then we conducted a jury trial um, of the daughter, correct? Correct. And she was convicted, and that was in what year? It was 2021, Your Honor. 2021. December of 2021. And of course, I was here for that trial and heard all the facts and saw all the evidence. And then your office charged the defendant with first degree murder, correct? Well, then all three of those defendants were yeah. charged, I believe, right. back in 2015. Well, this inf this information that's the basis of this file is dated December 4th of 2022, signed by Ryan Tetloff, charging uh, the defendant with murder, first degree homicide, disinterment and mutilation of dead bodies. So at the time this information was filed, all the facts were known. We'd had a full confession and we had run a murder trial. Then the defendant was located in Italy, correct? And you're, you don't deny that your office agreed in black and white language, very clear that you would not try her on first degree, that you would only try her on second degree, and that you would not try her for conspiracy, correct? No, I don't disagree with that. Okay. So then, as a result of that promise, she was extradited, and at that point, you issued, as promised, a amended information charging her with second degree murder, correct? Correct. Okay, so now this is where it's supposed to be. Nothing has changed. There was never a representation, we're gonna keep her charged with first degree, but we'll only prosecute her on second degree. All of the information and all of the rationale that I have read 
justifying doing what you're asking me to do was known at the time that you communicated with the Italian government. If you didn't think you could prosecute her for second degree murder, then why would you have agreed to do that as a basis to extradite her? Is that a question? You'd like yeah, to I, 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 that's what I don't understand. Well, Your Honor, it's, it's amazingly enough, right? I, I'm not, I was not an expert in treaties and agreement back at that time. I didn't understand that the federal government had actually violated its own treaty when they decided with Italy to actually request or demand that we actually agree to an authorization of some, something else other than the charge. Initially, as we state in our response, Italy actually agreed to murder one. Why did they agree to it? They agreed to it because murder one is actually allowed in, in the country of Italy. And it was only after an appeals to a humanitarian commission got involved, which the U.S. is not actually a party to, that an agreement was formed. And there's a difference. The, the treaty is the treaty, and the treaty actually says, if we have corresponding laws, you'll send back that person on that corresponding law. They created a, an agreement. An agreement is not the treaty, but they use the force of the enforcement language of the treaty in the agreement itself. And at that time, Your Honor, back in 2020 or 2021, when all of this was taking place, it was the only way that I felt that I might be able to have a chance to obtain justice for the victims by them actually being able to see the defendant and hear the defendant and hear the case. And so I was kind of put up against a wall as far as what were my options. So at that time, as we were being told by the Department of Justice, by the federal government, that the only way that this citizen who we believe murdered Robert Caravello and would actually see anything happen was to agree to that. The only way the victims would see the opportunity to all right, we're going to hit the pause button before we head to a break. Just a reminder for you, the Court TV is always on 24-7 on our YouTube channel. If you've missed an amazing courtroom moment or you want to watch an episode of our compelling original programming, you can do that there. There's also much more for you. That's at Court TV YouTube. We'll be right back. There's a tragic outcome in this case. Civil trial that is the focus of the Netflix documentary, Take Care of Maya. How a misdiagnosis tore their family apart. They continue to accuse Jack and Beata of being child abusers. Jack called me and said Beata just hung herself. Is the hospital they're suing responsible for what happened? The Take Care of Maya trial. Trial coverage today on Court TV. Mission we go. Defended Beverly McCallum in court. This is a hearing all about what's going to be the top charge against her. Will it be second degree murder, which is currently charged with, or first degree? Uh, apparently, uh, the state, or actually, I believe the state did uh, file a petition to amend, but it, it's up for discussion in front of the court because she was told by the state when she was in Italy and agreed uh, to waive extradition that it would be second degree murder that she would be prosecuted for. But for some reason, the state changed its mind. The defense is pushing back hard to uh, say, hey, this is what you said. This was your promise. Why not tell us at the outset it's first degree? Let's go back in now. This is if she came back. So why did I agree to it? Because I was left with no other choice at that particular moment. Because even though I didn't know it at the time, the federal government had basically violated that treaty on their own and then came back to us with the agreement and said, if you want her, this is the only way you'll get her. So it's lovely that they sit out there with their little letters that they send to you at five o'clock, which I personally felt and told them that it wasn't there any of their business to try to intervene, which is what they've done. But so be it. They've done it. But at the same point, you asked me why I did it. It was an order to try to seek justice and have something there for the victims. Right. And the reality is, I mean, I think two things are important to know is the defendant has been incarcerated at least for all of this time. She was incarcerated in Italy under a conditional uh, hold and she's been incarcerated here and 
having heard the confession of Mr. McMillan and having overseen the other, her daughter's trial um, and the evidence that the jury believed, the horrific evidence, the horrific evidence that the jury believed. Um, I understand uh, your responsibility and desire to get her back here and to make her face the jury and face the charges against her. Where right now I am not convinced is if after the fact there is a belief, well, maybe I have a technicality to get out of it. And by the way, this letter from the United States Department of State is not an influence on my decision. I'd already drafted an opinion prior to receiving that. Um, it comes down to a question of keeping our word. It comes down to a question right now in today's society, people are very skeptical. They don't trust government and they're skeptical of the law, prosecutors, the judiciary. Um, and in my opinion, it is the lawyers and the judges that have done a good job so far keeping the country on the right track. Um, you gave your word, this is what you were going to do. And now you want to use a technicality to not follow that. I still think you're conflating the two issues. I think the information, what you're charging her with, what you agreed to do is second degree murder. The other issues about what you can talk about at trial and what witnesses you can bring in is a different issue. Again, uh, we could find no case law in Michigan dealing with this. And as, 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 as you are raising the issue uh, for the first time, well, <clears throat> now we believe we don't have to follow the treaty because Italy didn't follow it. This is a case of first impression. It's a pretty big issue. I don't think anybody in this courtroom has ever dealt with it before. It's not like the typical criminal docket where most of the issues, most of us have dealt with them and are very familiar with the law. So yes, I want to make a decision. I want to do it right. And I want it based on the law. And if that means we have to adjourn this out a couple weeks, so that I can get a reply brief from the defense, that is the right thing to do, and it's the prudent thing to do. So Ms. Cook, I need a date for approximately two weeks out, and I want a reply brief. So, and there won't be a response to the reply brief, because we're gonna follow, they filed the motion, you filed the response, now they get to file a reply, and then we'll come back for oral argument and Mr. Uh, Kendall, I'm sorry, I didn't acknowledge you. Mr. Kendall is also at council table, or Mr. Kendall is apparently gonna make the argument, and I assume Mr. Havis, and um, it'll be my responsibility to make a decision. I would say based on this morning, I would like to have an hour set aside. I don't know that we'll need it, but let's make sure we have an hour. November 15th at 11. November 15th at 11. Does that work for your calendar, Mr. Lloyd? At what time, Your Honor? 11. You're okay? You're okay. Mr. Kendall is at a conference that week, Your Honor. The whole week, Mr. Candela, Monday through Friday? Conference ends on Wednesday, so I wouldn't be available on the 15th. I don't know what day of the week the 15th is. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat>
November 29th at 3. November 29th at 3. Mr. Havis, now your schedule, November 29th at 3. We can make that work on Okay. I will look forward. I would like uh, your, what day of the week is that, Ms. Cook? It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. I want your um, reply brief filed by noon that Friday. I want ample time to review it. I want the prosecutor to have ample time to review it. That's the Friday after Thanksgiving. That's the Friday after Thanksgiving? Friday. Oh, oh, I see. Mm. By Monday morning at 10. Okay. Very fine the clerk's office won't even be open Friday. We wouldn't be able to get it Friday. Maybe the 27th. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not working on that Friday. The court's closed. The other, just just so I'm clear, so that Mr. King. All right. And the back and forth will continue, albeit in the way of written arguments. Uh, the judge uh, scheduling the dates uh, for the brief, the reply brief to be due. Everybody will be back in court November 29th for a follow up hearing. I hear what the defense is saying here. You know, State of Michigan, you're bringing the charges. You want this prisoner from the country of Italy. So what do you want her for? Well, they could have said first degree murder, but they didn't. They said second degree. So I get it. I get this. And I was a prosecutor. I'm going to bring in retired police sergeant Melissa Pickleton watching along with me in Nashville. Good morning, Melissa. All right. So what did you think of this uh, back and forth and uh, what should ultimately happen here? Oh, good morning, Julie. And uh, I'm watching this and in disbelief a little bit. You know, there's so many different things going on. This prosecutor is taking it upon himself, and he's in the United States in a specific state in a specific city to almost interfere with extradition that we have agreements, extradition agreements with other countries. We need to have those extra extradition agreements with the other countries for reasons of this bringing very serious criminals back to our state, our country, to answer for crimes. So when he said we're bringing her back for second degree murder, for him to go and switch that on the back end, and he basically admitted it, that he basically admitted that, yeah, I just went ahead and did this because that we made the agreement to get her over here. And the judge made a really good point. I love this judge. She made mm -hmm. such a good point in that when this country has such a problem trusting our government, and we do, we don't trust our government anymore. I'll be honest, I don't trust my government anymore right now, it's especially the top level mm -hmm. tier that's going on with so many different things. Mm -hmm. But we need to keep our word, and especially when we're dealing with other countries. So I think it's very arrogant of him to assume he was going to slide in and do this. And normally I'm pro-prosecution, but the defense has a really good point here, and I don't blame them. And it's also a little comment of, well, I get... I get motions all the time that I have to answer, you know, right away. Sir, this is not the same type of motion. You are talking about another country. And then also for him to assume that the judge didn't need to be included on right. uh, on their past two weeks of discussions. And maybe I'm wrong on that, Julie. I'm, I'm not an attorney, but I think that, that the judge should have been included from day one. Should right, and you've been, been through extradition and, and the process of it and hearings. I'm sure had to had prisoners, you know, you've arrested, maybe they bond out, maybe they flee, and then got to bring them on back. And um, so part of the, the process in extradition, you know the sergeant is... If you're the requesting jurisdiction, you've got to show the reason why you're requesting. You know, and um, we talked about a lot last week with Shanna Gardner Fernandez going back to Florida um, from Washington State, and initially she was going to fight it, and then like kind of threw her hands up because you know it's not the time to try the case. It's just, are you who you know we think you are, and did you do something bad, and is there probable cause uh, to show that you allegedly did the bad thing? Uh, here. What I think is disgraceful is that this case is so old. They had all these years to get it right. What do you want this prisoner for? You know, if she did murder her husband, bring her in on the top count. Don't, I, I, it just makes no sense. I, I think this is not the hill they should try to die on here with fighting to get, you know. Let it go. Sing the Frozen song. Uh, Sergeant Pinkleton, <laughs> thank you so much for weighing in. Uh, we're going to hit a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. Well, the first thing I knew, popcorn went flying, and then I thought, oh my God, you shot him.
An argument over a cell phone and a bag of popcorn turned deadly at a movie theater. Scott Rosenwasser told this jury this was murder. It wasn't just one attack, and it wasn't just popcorn being thrown. I'm looking up at this guy, and he looked like a monster standing there. Victim to Verdict with Ted Rollins. All new Sunday night, 8, 7 central, only on Court TV. Back to court we go. More on that motions hearing for Beverly McCallum. We are requesting that the murder one charge still stay on the information. I understand that. Well, <clears throat> hypothetically, if you were to say, well, no, it's just mm -hmm. going to be murder two. I don't have the authority to do that. I believe the only authority that I have is if I decide that the defense is right, um, is that I can dismiss count one of the information. That would leave the dis, it would leave the um, disembodiment uh, as the only count left. I cannot tell a prosecutor how to charge people. That is solely within your discretion. But I can make a decision as to whether or not leaving count one on the information violates the agreement that you reached on behalf of the United States with the state of Italy. You've admitted today you gave your word, you put it in writing. It'll be my decision whether that gets removed from the information. Then at that point, we're gonna have a really interesting discussion about venue because that was already raised once um, that would only leave count two, but we haven't crossed that bridge yet. If you amend the information to second degree murder and dismiss count one, then we'll set a trial date and I'll make a decision on your pretrial motions about whether or not uh, extradition can be discussed, et cetera. Um, but this is about the information, um, what's required under 6.112. So I understand your position is you get to keep count one. And then if you can keep count one, you're willing to add a third count of second degree murder. Their request is count one has to come off the information. So That's the decision I'm making. So we're clear, Your Honor, that's not what we're what we're requesting is the addition of murder two. Right. That murder one stay there, but not to be tried, only for explanation purposes. There's a difference because if you don't present the jury a jury form with count one on it, there's nothing for them to actually, and, and I must be clear on this, Your Honor, because that was something that the federal government kept asking me. And I told them that my resolution was is that murder one was there just like in Therian. It was there in a conspiracy, for theory, and it was conspiracy nature. For here, it's for us the opportunity to present evidence. Theory, in my opinion, is extremely distinguishable from this case. Theory dealt with mail fraud, and it dealt with conspiracy. Here, you're asking to leave on the information murder one, which you agreed you would not do. If you agreed you would not do it, then should it be there? That's the issue before the court. And then it would be up to you to decide whether you wanted to amend the information back to second degree murder, which is what your office did to get her here. And then we would deal with pretrial motions as to whether or not it's appropriate to get into the extradition process, et cetera which I think it may very well be, but that's not the issue today. And that's what I said. I believe that you're conflating two issues. As I read the information, that's what you're charging her with. The agreement wasn't, we'll charge her with first degree, but we'll ask a jury not to convict her. The agreement was is that you would not try her or charge her on first degree murder or conspiracy, but on second degree. So I'm going to be more interested in whether or not you are correct 
You're telling, you've told me this morning that you believe the US, United States government violated the treaty and therefore you don't have to follow it. That's what I'm interested in, that's what you've said. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Your Honor, I don't believe that's what I said. Okay, then maybe you need to have me, uh, I guess maybe I need to understand whether or not you believe you have to follow the agreement that you put in writing in a diplomatic note, which was the basis of extradition. Do you believe you have to follow the promise that you made to Italy? I believe I followed the promise, Your Honor, and I believe in my response that I presented the case law that would allow to show that I'm still following that because the defendant would not be tried on number one. She would be tried only on number two. Number one is there for informational purposes only. That's why I have the issue when you say I'm conflating issues. I don't believe I do because I believe I say in the resolution that I propose that murder two is the only charge she would be tried on. Murder one is there for informational purposes and allowing me the opportunity to present the evidence I need to for a conviction. So that's the issue, and I will look forward to reading the reply brief by the defense as to whether or not the prosecutor's request to leave count one in the information um, violates the treaty and whether the jury can ha receive that and how does MCR uh, 6.112 play into it. And we're having that hearing on the date and time that everybody's agreed their calendars it will work because the friday before is a court holiday uh, the defendant must submit their reply brief by 10 a.m on monday morning uh, so that both the court and the prosecutor have time to read it very good thank you all very much that's all for the record all rise Oh, the judge holding the state's feet to the fire. There's Beverly McCallum in that striped jail jumpsuit. Uh, not being very expressive uh, at all today. Remember, uh, the offense that's at issue here occurred in 2002, the murder of her husband. Uh, and uh, it looks like she may even be in a wheelchair. It was hard to see. Uh, but now look at the sheriff's deputy pulling her back. And uh, there she goes. So not sure what kind of ailments uh, she suffers from, uh, but she'll get care in the jail for whatever it is. She's going to stay in jail uh, awaiting her trial. Uh, the judge did not make a ruling uh, today. The judge is allowing both sides to do their reply, their briefs and their reply uh, brief uh, to the issue here, which is whether or not the state was right to have amended the complaint after she waives extradition, comes back on the second degree charge, and then they say, oh, we're going to bump it up to first. No, they could have said first degree from the outset, and that was the judge's point. And I think it's kind of disgraceful myself that they didn't get it right the first time. We'll see what happens. They'll be back in court the end of November.